Hello, this is Tim Zandle, broadcasting from Who Knows Where, and this week's video is all about quality and looking and just not simply walking on by, but doing something about what we actually find. Let's get to the video. Hello, Tim Sandal back with you with another video. And for this video, we're going to be having a look at uh, the culture of quality and how that applies to the clean room environment. Uh, so we're just going to have a brief look at um, some examples just to give a flavour of um, what all this talk at the moment about quality culture, culture compliance actually means for your everyday lives. So. First of all, let's have a look at this concept of the culture of quality. Um, so a culture of quality is an environment where all of us as, as team members generally care about the quality of our work and we're making decisions based on how we can achieve that level of quality. And we know that we've got to this point when there's a recognition at all levels throughout our company that quality should be achieved for its own sake not just to meet regulatory approval and whereas compliance is just about following rules quality is about being proactive thinking before we act suggesting improvements instilling confidence and addressing risks and that's why I've kind of broken down these concepts into sort of five key areas that you can see on the slide in front of you. So we've got the appropriate environment. We're pursuing quality, not just compliance. We're seeing others around us doing acts of quality. We hear people talking about quality and we feel, we kind of sense quality all around us. And we have to keep best practices in mind. And this is about being motivated, wanting to produce a high quality product. And it's about managers and team leaders leading the way in best practices. And when we think about clean rooms, we've got things like how we go into the clean room, how we use garments, how we change into those garments, about regular and appropriate glove disinfection about bringing items into the clean room and following the contamination control and transfer disinfection requirements, about correct cleaning procedures, about good clean room practices, how we stand, how we act, how we are very respectful of grade A, and our working procedures, and also then how we exit from the clean room as well. So these are all of um, real importance. But that's a little bit abstract let's look at a few things very briefly in practice so for example if you open the doors of an autoclave or the other way around you're putting things into an autoclave and it's not following the validated load pattern that's bad reject the load and the reason for that is is because we haven't got adequate sterilization because the load pattern in an autoclave is qualified in such a way that we know that the moist heat is contacting with every surface for a sufficiently long length of time so that's something we wouldn't just walk on by we'd say no nope, it's got to be redone okay another example suitable garments well okay the the garments that we get are coming from a uh, legitimate clean room company but are they folded right if a garment's misfolded and it's going to fall on the floor you have to go and get another one if the garment is torn or it's fibrous or anything like that go and get another one and also then how we gown and how we look. But this isn't just putting up with it. And it's not just getting another one. It's raising the issue to someone who can do something about it. OK, so let's say we saw some fungi. But it wasn't in the clean room. It's outside the clean room in the CNC area, for example. Let's say we go to take a gown out. And we can see behind the wall 
Right, in this photograph, we've got some black mould. We wouldn't just leave it, get our gown and carry on. We would contact the uh, appropriate manager and get that fungus cleaned and disinfected, have the gown stored somewhere else where, and put in regular checks to prevent these kind of things from happening. Okay, let's go with another example. Let's say you're not feeling very well. Okay, so we never cough and sneeze in the direction of the work area. So here I'm thinking of a situation where you're wearing your mask, everything's right, you're all done up okay, but you've got the urge to sneeze. You immediately pull away from the work area and then you immediately exit the clean room and you go through the changing process again. And similarly, if you're unfit for work, if you have cuts, if you have a chest infection, if you have a streaming nose, if you're on antibiotics, you've got to raise all of these things with your manager and have the appropriate evaluation done. And a lot of the times that you just won't be able to go into the clean room. Okay, and my fifth and final example is kind of a bit of a cheat because it's loads of examples put into one, but there you go, it's my video. Um, so examples of other bad things would be seeing damage to clean room surfaces, scratches, cuts, things like that, where vinyl was torn, for example. See it, report it. If there were rivets or things that might be interfering with the smooth cleaning of the walls or we had um, a bad conduit where we've got dust traps, if we had bad design to um, ledges, we're trying to eliminate all ledges from the clean room. If we saw rouging, rouging is bad because it's a roughened surface attachment for bacteria and it also creates particles. If we saw a repair had been done and the silicon application was, was not smooth, it was all uh, twisted or it had like um, lumps in it, that'd be bad. And if someone needs to come along and do that again, put it right. If the lights have gone and you've not got enough light to do your job properly and see what you're doing, that's bad, report that. If we had smoke detectors in a clean room, for example, um, that would be bad because all they're going to do is um, pick up, uh, create bad air flows and also they're never going to pick up any fires anyway because um, all the air is always going down all the time. Okay, so the key message here is don't walk on by, stop do something if you're busy doing your job you've got to get things done then when that session's over end of shift whatever still report it it's really important that we start to see things we react to things and we start pushing for the best in our environments and particularly when we're trying to decrease contamination it's also when that philosophy as well is to kind of think before we act before we do something to stand back is this the right thing to do um, if I have to do something slightly different what are the consequences of that so we could have a uh, atypical intervention for example if we've not done it before we've not done it in a meter field and that's a big risk area and we need that either risk assessed or we need not to do it and there's various decisions that need taken but we don't just do something that isn't right so we need to set the quality level to excellent and we need to be, you know, if we all start doing the right thing, then we'll eventually we will drive a culture by embedding quality, getting good ownership of the process, we'll get good training. We also need to keep on with collaboration. We need to be relentless about collaboration. We need to work with everyone, have our critical friends, and draw on all the expertise is there. But equally, we need to be realistic. We're not just like trying to seek an impossible perfection. We're there about the process of gradually making things better. So we're always going to be working on continuous improvement and again helping to drive collaboration. And we should talk positively. And if errors occur, then we should talk positively about those errors. We should raise those early errors as soon as possible. Senior managers will always want to know something as soon as possible and react to it. The worst thing is to leave it and not react to it until it's too late. And this is all about helping to change the culture and driving this kind of cultural quality. Okay, so thank you for watching. Something a little bit different in terms of the theme, but hopefully you found this interesting. So goodbye from me, Tim Sandal. Good luck with the rest of your day. Keep your eyes open, 
look for things when you see things, either report them there and then or report them when you can. And together we can build a quality culture. Thank you very much. Cheerio.